my name is Bruce Yane and today I'd like to show you my static model display that's hanging from my ceiling that represents motion in two directions. When you throw an object, it has a forward motion that is relatively constant and a downward motion that is accelerating and when we put those two motions together, we end up getting something called a parabolic curve. Uh, this represents that movement and it displays what the object is doing horizontally versus vertically. So let's take a look. On closer examination of this model, we see that there's marks here that are equally spaced along the horizontal axis. They're equally spaced because when you throw an object, hopefully it is moving at a constant speed, which, move, which means it's moving the same distance for each moment of time. Now on the vertical, it's accelerating. Galileo actually figured out that an object will increase the distance that it falls by a square of the whole numbers for each moment of time on the vertical. So what I've done is I've dropped this one down one centimeter. One times one, times one is one. Uh, this one is uh, two times two is four. The square of two is four, so it's dropped down four. This one has dropped down nine centimeters. This one is 16. This one is 25. 36, 49, 64, 81, and then finally 10 times 10 gives us 100 centimeters. So it is dropping down according to the square of the whole numbers. So this represents those two motions combined together in the, in the motion of an object. And I can match it if I take an object and I throw it at the right speed, I can actually get it to follow this path fairly nicely. And so that's what I show my students. This is a model of what a, what a parabolic curve looks like. Constant speed in one direction and an accelerating motion in this direction. And if I do this correctly, I should be able to take this ball and throw it so that it matches this curve. Okay, so Lottie, that's what I want you to record if you would. I'm going to say start. You ready? Start. And as soon as she catches it, you stop it. Did that match it? Try it again. Is that, am I getting close here? Or? Yeah. yeah. It like it from this angle. Like from this angle, look pretty good? Okay. Now, if I were to take this ball and throw it slower, what would I expect to happen to the curve? It would drop sooner. Okay. So that means I would simply have to move these marks closer together, and I would still be able to represent that curve. And if I throw it faster, if I throw it faster, what's going to happen to the marks? Yeah, exactly. They're going to be spread further apart. And it would still be represented by this curve. Now, remember we said that uh, it should be doing just the opposite on its way up. She, hopefully, she can throw, the, throw it upwards so that it matches that path coming up. See if you can do that. That was getting there? Okay. That was, good. that was pretty good. Okay. Now we can take it one step further. And if I put this on an angle, it's still going to follow that same path. It's changing by the square root, I'm sorry, by the square of the whole numbers. So, how was that? Let's try it. Try it. <laughs> so anyway, this is a <laughs> this is simply a model showing that same thing as what we saw on your paper.